Hi, it's Jake here, and welcome to The Voluntary Life. I am not saying that I know any way by which you can be 100% free, meaning that you can live exactly the life that you want to live at every moment of every day without any uh, drudgery, or without any having to do anything that you don't happen to want to do at that particular moment. But my belief is that it is possible to live 70 to 90 percent free and that I believe with no scientific evidence whatsoever that most people live in a state of 10 to 30 percent freedom. Uh, what Henry Thoreau called lives of quiet desperation uh, where people are just simply trying to keep out of trouble, trying to keep out of debt, trying to just not get fired, trying to do whatever is necessary not to rock the boat, trying not to have another argument with the spouse. That was the late great Harry Brown and this is part two of our discussion of Harry Brown's book How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy part two. I've just found this section. I just wanted to, uh, just to, to, um, to go back to the property and the shared property thing. I'd be curious what you think of this. So I'll, I'll read this out to you. In a non-marriage, you simply continue being the person you were before you started living together. You continue to work where you want to work, pursue the interests that concern you most, and at the same time enjoy the opportunity to be closer to the one you love. This means you retain your own property, your income, and make your own decisions. There's no need for joint decisions because each decision will primarily concern one person and only incidentally the other. It's just as unrealistic to merge your property as it is to try and merge your minds. And property is very important. The control of your property is the most tangible expression of your freedom. That's, it kind of goes on and on, but that's his basic um, argument. And... Please understand, I'm not, I'm not defending um, Brown's point particularly about marriage because I just find it interesting. But I think his point is, you know, marriage doesn't equal love and happiness. Marriage is like basic, basically a contractual arrangement. It might be that marriage is, you know, either an expression or vehicle for or in some way linked to love. But he's arguing that... Marriage is just a, a, a kind of exclusivity contract with property relations, I guess. And, um, and, in, and, and in fact, in, in the current world, marriage is, is – um, there's something else that marriage is, which is that it is also a property contract. That, it's also that's true. It has all sorts of state um, – Sorry, I'm just coming in halfway through. Um, I <laughs> – I mean, because of the kind of world we live in at the moment as well, I think some couples have to get married if they want to spend any more time together, because otherwise because they're going to the be living in different countries. Right. Which, you know, isn't really... Yeah, so sometimes yeah. marriage is just like a, a contract in order to get around yeah. state barriers to and, spending and, I mean, time I think, together. Yeah, and I think in a sense, like, in those situations, it's kind of forced on you by the state. Because it's saying well, you have to get married if you want to, if you, um, want, to if you want to be together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think- if if you want, um, if you want the financial benefits of being together. No, just to stay in the same country, because otherwise. No, I'm talking about people who live in different countries. Oh, oh, oh! Right, no, quite right. But I mean, yeah, there are definitely. I don't know about the US. I assume it's the same, but there are definitely like financial incentives for people to get married here, like tax breaks and stuff like that. You know, I mean, Harry Brown is basically describing friends with benefits, right? It's like, look, we'll just, you know, basically do do what you feel. Yeah, he is describing like a flatmate situation where you're just sleeping together, basically. Yeah, I mean, in his situation, it's like, listen, everybody keeps their maximum freedom. And, you know, except for, <laughs> except for emotional and sexual availability, that then becomes the exclusive property of the person you're making the agreement with. Well, you know, I don't know whether or not he changed it, but he's got a bit of like early 70s free love stuff going on in this book as well. Did you notice that? There's like, yeah, you know, decide what you like. And I mean, I think Harry's basically got the, the, um, um, Big gold medallion, hairy chest, long hair thing going on in this book. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a few chapters which are a bit like, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, um, 
Harry Brown justifying uh, justifying wanting to go out to all of those uh, 1970s um, key key swapping um, events. But anyway, to come back to to the original thing, though, like regardless of what Harry says in this, there is still a question about. Uh, sorry, regardless of what he says about the sexual stuff, the, the the exclusivity or not, there is still an argument to put against his no, argument. Was, of, was... uh, there's still an argument against the Harry property argument, which is to say, well, okay, but then again, if you're saying, like, it's just a contract about emotional and sexual exclusivity, then what happens if you do choose to have children? Because then, you know, one person's going to lose all their income. So, you know, and that, that you've got this, um, oh, everyone keeps their own property, and then one person is a lot more vulnerable in the process of child-rearing um, economically. And he has an answer for that, which he says basically, well, first of all, if you're not ready to do it, you know, if you don't think you can take care of the children, kind of don't do it, is sort of his argument. But then the other one is he says, well, if one person, i.e. the guy, um, is not going to be the ultimate child, well, not owner, but he used the word custodian, right? He says, if one person's if, the, if it's going to be the woman who is the ultimate custodian of the child, and if she wouldn't be able to afford it, then he says, well, the guy just gives her, like, you know, 20, 20 years' worth of, of cash, like, in a bank account for the child, and then everyone still keeps their property. That's his argument. <laughs> how, how, is that, how is that the guy keeping his property? Well... Um, because he's Harry is against, as Marissa was saying, Harry says, you know, don't try and do some kind of complicated contract about future maintenance. We were talking about this earlier, like as you were saying, it's so that the woman know the woman is not just staying with the guy then for financial security. Of, yeah, for reasons of financial security, it's like that is purely her choice. So whatever happens, if they have kids, if she has to stop working, whatever. You know, it's clear in the relationship that they're not together out of, like, any kind of practical obligation. They're together, it's, basically, because they want yeah, to. Yeah, it's like freedom. So that, that's, his, freedom. that's his argument. I mean, all he's really suggesting is a way of preventing um, being caught in a situation uh, where, you know, there is a split up and then having to deal with it in like at that time it's it's kind of it's I, i'm seeing it as more of just like a preventative plan I, I would say like to, to argue it sort of like in the extreme right i reckon harry harry's idea marissa your phrase earlier was one foot out the door right like the harry plan for relationships seems to me to be that basically you have all your bags packed and your toothbrush in the bag, right? Everything like ready that you could just walk away from the relationship tomorrow with as little financial, any other, this, that, and the other, right? That you arrange your affairs so that any time that you're not picking up the bag and walking is because you want to be there and because you're enjoying being there and that both partners know that the other one's kind of got like the toothbrush packed, right? This is, I'm not arguing that this is, that this is a, a, a good or bad or anything. I'm just saying like to put it in its most extreme form, that seems to be the principle that goes through all of what he's saying. He says it about business relationships too. Organize it, don't have companies where you can, you're in a partnership and then you can't get out of it. And they say, organize everything so that you're individ dealing with individuals and everyone has their self-interest represented. And he's like saying, basically, make sure that the reason that you're in every single relationship is because you're staying there because you, you're, you love it and it brings you joy and uh, fulfillment and happiness. And you know that you're there because you love it, because you could literally walk out the door tomorrow. That seems to be the principle. That, that helps. That, that helped explain it. Thanks, Jake. Yeah, and that's one thing that I really uh, liked about this book, too, is that um, even though I, I definitely took issue with, with some of his, uh, you know, solutions or or, you know, preventative solutions, or I, I don't really know the word for it, but um, in the beginning of the book, he strictly says, like, this is what I think 
is the best way to handle it. Like, this is just my theory on how I think is, is the best, um, way to, to achieve freedom. And this is what worked for me. But if you think that something else will work for you, then that's, that's fantastic. Like personally, um, Kyle and I don't have like the TV is mine and the refrigerator is his or, or anything like that. Or like even when we go grocery shopping, like if I get a, a six pack of ginger ale, like, cause I want ginger ale, like Kyle's welcome to any of them at, at any time. Like it's never, and that works really well for us. But as far as like being in the relationship because we want to be, I think, I mean, I know we, we definitely have that. Like uh, we constantly are checking in with each other and, and making sure that this is like the most ideal relationship that it can be. One of the problems I, I appreciate what Harry's saying about the, the complete freedom to go at any time. Right, like like the way that Jake described it, having the bag packed and and, and you could just grab it and go. But I, I wonder, with a relationship like that, like a marriage, isn't there some point where, like, the distinction between just being friends and being married is is um, having a stake in it that's more than just. I'm having a hard time explaining myself. Um, well, Greg, just to, to, to answer what you're saying, I mean, I think the interesting thing is that apparently for Harry, it wasn't enough for his happiness, mm-hmm. right? Because he did end up, you know, he advocated the, quote, non-marriage. And then he actually said, you know what, actually, and I, I haven't read it in detail. I know somebody posted it, but he said, basically, in the end of the day, there's something different when you choose to make this commitment and you know that, you know, and, and so uh, what's interesting, like, I mean, I think as, a, as a, a thought experiment, like, why wouldn't you literally have two bags packed next to the door is an interesting thought experiment. But apparently for Harry, it wasn't enough. And why? Well, I think, I think it goes, I think that it has something to do with uh, vulnerability and, um, like having one foot out the door, it, it, it as as taking away. I mean, having one foot out the door and being uh, prepared to leave at any point, I think, takes away a little bit from the intimacy that can be achieved in a relationship where you're actually like prepared to stay, kind of thing. Like it, it's not it's not any kind of like sentence. Like like I'm. I've signed this piece of paper and so I'm going to be with you forever kind of thing. Like it's not final, but it's the intention. And I think that if your intention is, is to just, is to always be prepared to leave. I think that, and, and if you, and he, he viewed vulnerability as like a negative thing. But I think that if you're not, you know, like, having your bags packed and, or, or always kind of, he also talked about kind of always being on the lookout for like somebody who's better. Um, oh, God, which, which is like, and, and that's the whole other thing is that like, like Kyle might not be the like 100% best match for me in the entire world, but like we're super compatible and we love each other. Like, you know, immensely and, and we trust each other and our relationship is fantastic. And so it doesn't have to be about if there's somebody else who's better for me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, one of the things that, um, it was one of the conference calls. I can't remember which one, but Steph talked about how, um, how it's kind of unavoidable just just because of how we've been raised it's it's kind of unavoidable that uh, there are going to be times when um you're going to get hurt or that you're going to hurt the other person and if you sort of have your bags packed ready to go at all times i mean it kind of makes it impossible to be that you have to be perfect right like god if i do something horrible that could be it. That could be the end of it, right? Like one thing, right? Yeah, it's like you don't get any second chances. 
Right. You, you know, you like, there's no room for human fallibility. Right. Right. I think that's what was sort of nagging me about the absolute freedom approach. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think I, I agree with you, Marissa, that it, 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 I don't know, my, I guess my, I haven't actually read the book, <laughs> but hearing about sort of some of his ideas about marriage and relationships brought up a lot, some pretty strong feelings for me because, and I, I, I do agree with you that like, I think, you know, the whole, I've got my bags packed analogy is um, potentially, I guess, a, like a blocking thing for intimacy. And um, an actual barrier to intimacy. Yeah. Because it's like, it's almost like an, like an implicit sort of constant background threat. You know, like my bag's waiting by the door, so don't piss me off. <laughs> Do you think it could uh, dispose a person to become impulsive? Is that kind of what what you're all uh, getting at? No, I think I think actually it will stifle um, uh, um, spontaneity in a relationship because you'd always be constantly concerned, right? Like, yeah. oh shit, if I say this or if I do that or if I go here or I uh, see this person or say the wrong thing about that show or you know it it could end up with every single action could end up with harry grabbing his bag and going right yeah i think marissa kind of touched on it but like with us i think it's more like we're prepared to stay and able and willing to go if it comes to that but we like are committed and prepared and like willing to just try and figure out like if something's wrong then we're going to talk about it and try and figure out what we can do to make it better or fix it or like do whatever we can so that we can continue this because we love it so much. And yeah, and we, I guess go out and a better model, <laughs> which well, is what Harry seems to be advocating. Well, and that's the, that's the, dis- that's the difference, right? Is that's the commitment. That's the extra, that little extra I was talking about is the willingness to risk uh, getting hurt in order to keep what you have, right? I guess it seems like, you know, what he's talking about isn't so much about the day-to-day workings of the relationship. It's more about what if the relationship goes wrong, which is a little bit pessimistic. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's important to talk about and everything, but that seems to be kind of the focus behind most of his, like, you know, with all the caveats in the world, because I haven't actually read the book. I'm just... I've just been sort of listening to the conversation in the background, and um... I I don't think it. Uh, I mean, I understand that it, it it appears on the surface to be somewhat pessimistic, but I I think that um, Harry was just being prudent because um, you know I'm sure that all of us are familiar with we, we may have had friends or relatives who have been in a in a long marriage and. When the relationship falls apart, um, one of the one of the spouses becomes self. One of the spouses self destructs, becomes very vindictive, and makes it his or her life's purpose to cause grief for the other spouse for whatever reason. Uh, just because they want revenge, they want to be vindictive. I I, I think that he. Um, I may be reaching a little bit, but he may have been thinking about these things in the back of his mind. And, you know, it's it's a lot easier to walk away from an appliance or a piece of furniture. Uh, it's another thing to walk away from something that you're heavily invested in, like real estate. So... Uh, you know, somebody could say, well, I'm not going to make, uh, you know, even though we're both on the mortgage, I'm not going to help you pay it and you're going to be stuck paying it or else your credit's going to be ruined. Uh, so that, I think that he, he may have just been um, being very cautious, perhaps overly cautious. Uh, so that's that's my opinion. Yeah, and I think that's an excellent point. And obviously, you know, um, it's really, really important, obviously, to talk about that kind of stuff before you get married. But it's also a really good advert for not getting married to a vindictive person. 
um, for, from someone who's not in a serious relationship, and I'm, I'm just starting to get into one now, like I said before, I think the, these ideas have given me a lot of personal strength, and maybe as I get into a serious relationship, uh, if I do, um, my views would change. But I just felt empowered by the book because I've dealt with issues of insecurity in, in relationships and nothing that even approached marriage. But I'd always wonder, oh, you know, how's it going? Do they, uh, are they looking elsewhere? And, and I just think reading these concepts and realizing that I could walk away for, just just the, the the fact that I feel that I can walk away and so could they, that that has made me feel more secure because I know that they're with me because they want to. And and granted, it's not even close to anything serious as of yet, but um, I just feel uh, more comfortable knowing that we're both doing what we want to do at this point. Right, yeah, I, I think I think that's a really great point. And, and one thing that the book definitely does do that I, I think you're talking about is um, – it, it really encourages you to be who you are and, and be what you're comfortable with and do what you like to do, which, um, and, and, you know, the more comfortable you get with yourself and not falling into these, like, identity traps, um, it, it really, uh, because I, I know for myself in, like, past relationships, I I was in, like, identity traps or group traps where, where I was always trying to be something that I wasn't, uh, something that I thought that other people would, people would like. And that is a real struggle because you, because you can't really know, or obvious, like you're not really, uh, you know, who you are. Uh, and so you, there's this doubt that the person isn't going to, like, they're going to find out who you are and then reject you. But, but one thing the book really does well is to encourage you to be yourself and be free and do what you like to do, and you'll find somebody, you'll find relationships that work for who you really are, and you don't have to put on any kind of um, fronts. <laughs> right, because if you are who you are, you may screen out 95% of the people, but like Harry said, you only need to find one. It's not it's not a numbers game, you know? So. If you if you are who you are, I mean, just just think of the traditional male role for the at, in the dating world. You have to spend a lot of money, act like you're this alpha male, and just be this macho guy. Whereas if I'm not like that up front, there's a there's a lot of women out there that aren't going to be attracted to that. But I don't want those types of people anyway. So as much as they're screening me out, I'm screening them out. So I think it's helpful. Just be who you are on the front side, and then. And then also, when when you ever get into a relationship, they can't they can't blame you for anything that bothered you, or because you, you've been consistent the, the entire way. I agree. I just I just wanted to say on, on um, another thing that um, I thought was really nice about this book: some of the anecdotes that he has about dealing with, for example, getting out of debt, and how he you know, went through a period in his life when he was significantly in debt and, and, you know, his approach to freeing himself from that debt. I mean, I thought that was, you know, it was really, there were some great things in there um, about, you know, just sort of little techniques and mechanisms that he used. And and the anecdotes about the things that he did, like he talks about um, going to um, his, I think his boss or someone in a company and saying, you know, what is the worst problem that you have? And the guy told him something that there's nothing that he could do about. And then he said, okay, well, what's the second worst problem that you had? And then apparently the guy told him about some problem he was having with his salespeople. And so Harry offered to do like some courses, some training courses for the salespeople. And then he got some money from that. And then he was able to do this. And there's just these little anecdotes about all the different ways that he tried to find to, to add value so that he could, you know, um, be as as free as possible to do what he wants to do, and uh, I think you know those those things. I I enjoyed reading about that because I I, I uh, there's something very there's something um, admirable about him uh, choosing his own path in terms of his sort of entrepreneurial activities and finding ways of of um, of uh, kind of um, giving himself. Financial freedom, basically, which um, which I think is a really uh, great 
great thing to do. Yeah, I really like that. I really like those anecdotes as well. And I really like the emphasis of the book that, like, you're never stuck anywhere. There's always, like, thousands of, of uh, options available other than what you're doing right now, which I really, really like. Yeah. And I also appreciated his point about how, at the end of the day, he's looked at, you know, living in a statist world. And obviously, he can't make any choices about um, driving on state roads and so forth. But that he's just he just made the decision to have as little to do with the state as possible, which means that he just didn't even bother with trying to get, you know, the freebies and, and free services and this, that and the other. And I think this is also in the context of the 70s when things were kind of like totally, I mean, the, the, the amount of, State, it, there was an awful lot going on in those times in terms of like welfare growing and everything. But basically, he just his argument is from not is is, is is from a personal freedom perspective of just it's not worth the effort. Just ignore the state as much as you can in order to get on with your own life because trying to get you know you know what you can out of um, status programs. Um, quite regardless of the morality argument, either way, he just says, like, basically, it's not worth your time. Right. That reminds me of the point that he made uh, of direct alternatives versus indirect alternatives. And I, I found that really powerful because uh, I think every, a lot of people are disillusioned with the world. And I just hear a lot of my friends were very involved with current events and politics and whatnot. And my friends are so focused on politics, if they could just elect the right guy to office, and get enough, like like Harry said, get enough people to view the world the same way he does, then things would be better. And that's that's the utopia trap that uh, we just got to change other people's minds. And you you may never change other people's minds. They have a different worldview. They grew up differently, and you have to accept that. So we have to do is focus on what you can what you can do to make your life better. And like you previously discussed, I think a lot of people don't want to open up that Pandora's box because it might be scary to actually have to work on yourself. And that's why people focus on other people's personal decisions. But uh, when you view things as direct versus indirect, I think you can make a bigger impact on your life. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, in many ways, it comes, uh, like, just thinking about the things that we've talked about, Marissa, what you were saying earlier on about um, how he views vulnerability. Uh, I think one thing that sort of runs through it, maybe this is what underlies his whole attitude towards relationships and why he goes for the whole, you know, just basically, um, you know, one foot out the door type approach, is that, uh, like, the one thing that he seems to not have kind of not had that much interest in is, is really the um, more the emotional freedom, the introspection to do with, um, you know, understanding maybe why things uh, didn't work out, whatever. And that, I think, is something that that, um, that may be informing his approach to some of those relationship questions. But, you know, I think that's a little bit missing in the book. But apart from that, you know, I, the book for me just has a, a, a lot of really, really valuable ideas and useful insights to, to think about. And even the bits that I don't necessarily agree with, I think it's, they're, they're worthwhile, um, good stuff to, to, you know, to ponder. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And, and yeah, like, even though there are some, some stuff in the book that I think are, are a little bit mis, misguided, maybe, is um, I think that it's definitely one of my favorite books, and I'm, I'm really glad that I read it. Um, one, one thing that I wanted to point out that stuck out to me in the book, too, is um, there's there's one point in the, I think it's also in the, <laughs> the chapter about marriage is kind of with me, but um, there's one other thing where um, he was talking about him uh, being jealous or, like, having, um, like, his uh, girlfriend or whatever going out with another guy. And him imagining, like, the worst possible situation uh, in his mind and just imagining it and imagining it and imagining it. And that's some sort of solution to the problem until eventually when you imagine it enough, it just won't bother you anymore. 
which I don't understand <laughs> at all. Like, I don't understand how that would just uh, stop bothering you if you just, like, keep thinking about it. That sounds a little dysfunctional. <laughs> yeah, he suggested doing that with, uh, like, confronting your family as well. Uh, just, like, imagine the worst possible situation and just keep that in your mind and, and just keep going it over and over again, and then eventually it just won't bother you anymore. And these, I think, are more like Harry's coping mechanisms than a kind of deeper enlightenment in some ways, you know, um, about quite what the nature of those relationships are, for example, why it was that that woman he was with was going out with another guy and what was, you know, I like I think some of these are more like coping mechanisms than true um, emotional freedom. But there you go. That was that was his, um, perhaps that was his limitation. Does anyone have any other final thoughts on, on Harry? Is there any, anything else that you think we, uh, that we missed out um, about the book that you thought was, uh, that, that stuck out for you? Not me. I, I just really enjoyed the book, and thank you for choosing it. It was a really great read. Cool. Uh, same with me. It's my first time on Skype and, and the Freedom Book Club, and um, I enjoyed it a lot. So thank you. Well, thanks. It was a, I really enjoyed it as well. It was a great chat, and uh, it was really fun to, um, to talk about the ideas in the book and to, to reread the book as well. Thanks for doing this, Jake. It was great. All right. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Good night. Good night, guys. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.